we will now proceed to analyze the functions that allow the survival and growth of the working team. These are competence, membership and communication. It's not important that these three be covered by the same leader or person, nor it is relevant that the corporate leader be the one who covers them all together. It is important, though, to underline that the leader of communication, membership and competence arises from the encounter between the team expectations and the availability of team members to cover those basic functions. The following diagram highlights the three main functions at the staple of leadership. Competence. It grants survival of the group as it allows adaptation to the surrounding environment and demands the use of technical knowledge as well as professional expertise. A working team proves successful only when innovative, global and advantageous solutions are applied. Competence within leadership is therefore firstly adequate for the efficiency of teamwork and its tasks. Membership. This function grants the team self-care as well as long-lasting relationships among members, together with a caring environment focused on the members' individual needs and goals. A self-caring team eventually develops creativity and lack of any prejudice. Creativity, in fact, can only flourish within a mild and slightly competitive environment, where different attitudes and, at times, out-of-the-box ideas are supported. The absence of any prejudice eventually brings about the development of each member's true self and a serene research of solutions to any problem they will face. All too often, teams give much importance to competence by giving less value to membership, as it's seen as a second-hand function. Membership, instead, proves to be a fundamental function of leadership, which requires social capabilities and an acknowledgement of skills and result in order to create high-quality conditions for integration and lasting collaboration. Communication. This function allows the team to develop and support internal-external exchange, and by doing so, it helps create strong networks and synergies, as well as a link between the functions of membership and competence. Communication serves the team to build up a shared code, a shared language to correctly carry out the tasks and reach the objectives. Communication is also a means to reach outside partners and organizations, be it small-medium enterprises, NGOs, or well-established firms, and so on, which a leader has to have in order to promote its teamwork, make it grow, and keep the records of the work achieved. Last but not least, a final point on the difference between corporate leader and functional leader. The corporate leader is the one who has been chosen by the organization to lead the team through its activities aimed at a specific goal or goals. He is given authority and responsibility. Responsibility equals the amount of tasks given, the enhancement of human resources and the correct use of means to reach a determined goal. Authority, on the other hand, defines the human resources the leader can count on as well as the means to be adopted to fully achieve a goal. A corporate leader is therefore responsible for the quality and quantity of the team's outcomes, for the meeting of deadlines, for the team's organizational objectives, and eventually for the optimization of resources at their disposal. The leader's responsibility is somehow balanced by the authority he is given to handle human and technical resources in a team. Authority gives the corporate leader a free hand on allocating activities and jobs to the team members, as well as to evaluate the members' performance or implement the decisions taken with the group. The functional leader is the result of a negotiation between the individual and the team and is based upon personal qualities and capabilities of the candidate as well as on the demands of the team itself. The functional leader has to ensure that all requirements of the group are met so that goals can be achieved. The functional leadership focuses on tasks, team members and their individual needs, as well as on guidance and motivation in order to be focused on actions and being result-oriented. It's hard for a single person to carry on such a role, 
Therefore, functional leadership envisages flexibility. It is to say that any group member can perform these actions, which means that anyone can be the leader. It doesn't matter who does what. What matters is whether the task gets done. Therefore, the leadership role itself is quite flexible. In the end, in a nutshell, we can say that the advantages of service leadership are the following. The acceleration of an integration process, the toning down of conflicts, the negotiation of objectives and roles, and the setting up of a method and a terrific improvement of relationships and performance.